Good morning. Welcome in the Czech National Bank. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Let me open our quarterly meeting of the Czech National Bank Board with analysts and introduce you the speakers of today. The Bank Board is represented by Deputy Governor Eva Zamrazilová and the Monetary Department is represented by its Executive Director Petr Král. Mr. Král will be also the person who will present you the new macroeconomic forecast of the Czech National Bank. So please now turn our attention to Mr. Kraus's presentation. Thank you for the floor. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, also from my side. It is really my great uh, pleasure and honor to be here again. Uh, to deliver a presentation on the uh, uh, CNB's new quarterly uh, macroeconomic uh, forecast. Uh, let me start by highlighting uh, the, uh, the most important uh, prerequisite of the uh, baseline scenario of the new macroeconomic forecast uh, that relates to the uh, assumptions regarding uh, monetary policy reaction function or the interest rate uh, rule. Uh, when it comes to the uh, situation of the monetary policy horizon. In the baseline scenario of the new uh, macro forecast, the central bank uh, sets interest rates in order to achieve uh, its 2% inflation target at the monetary policy horizon, which is situated 15 to 21 uh, months ahead. Uh, hopefully, uh, the uh, foreign price pressures are currently uh, peaking, uh, and they will uh, hopefully uh, uh, fade away, or they will not at least escalate further, and that's why the impact on uh, year-on-year -year inflation uh, will subside uh, in the end of uh, next year, uh, and uh, the primary effects of that uh, from inflation uh, will also, uh, will, uh, will also uh, fade away. That's why uh, central bank uh, uh, addressing the potential second round effects is concentrating its effort on the monetary policy horizon which is situated in the first half of 2024 which is uh, by one quarter uh, uh, movement of this uh, monetary policy horizon uh, closer to the point of decision when compared uh, with the summer, summer forecast, but, but as we time passes and we are one quarter uh, further from summer, uh, the monetary policy horizon is now uh, covering the same period, the first half of 2024, as it was the case in the previous forecast. Having said that, let me now uh, uh, emphasize the structure of my presentation, or in other words, the remainder of the of my presentation will uh, uh, look uh, such as follows. Uh, first of all, I would like to stress uh, assumptions based on which the new macroeconomic forecast was prepared. After that, I will uh, provide you with an in-depth insight into the new uh, baseline scenario of the forecast. Uh, following that, I will uh, uh, briefly compare the new forecast with the previous one. And the final part of my presentation will be dedicated to other monetary policy simulations we prepared to facilitate the decision-making process. Uh, the countries of our major trading partners, which is the euro area in effective, in effective terms, are uh, heading into a shallow recession. Uh, the uh, downward uh, trend in uh, uh, economic activity will be uh, supported by uh, escalating price pressures in the uh, euro area together with continuing problems uh, as regards the global value chains and the, uh, um, um, let's say, uh, um, subdued developments in the world, uh, world trade. Uh, after these effects will uh, gradually fade away throughout the second half of uh, next year, euro area GDP growth will renew. Uh, the current uh, extreme uh, price pressures uh, uh, abroad, uh, which are in our forecast uh, uh, 
uh, represented by the PPI growth in the effective euro era are peaking, uh, with the primary uh, driver being uh, energy component of that, but the non-energy non component has been also uh, relatively heightened. After the problems in global value chains uh, and the current uh, uh, peaking uh, energy prices uh, evaporate, uh, the PPI growth uh, in the area will decelerate uh, close, to, close to normal levels. Uh, the uh, current market outlook for uh, uh, Brent crude oil price has been uh, uh, shifted somewhere uh, uh, up uh, at, the, at the short end, but the outlook is still consistent with uh, expecting declining uh, crude oil, crude oil uh, prices over the, over the whole forecast horizon. The market outlook for uh, the nominal interest rates in the euro area is uh, relatively sharply increasing uh, as the markets expect a relatively bold uh, monetary policy reaction of the ECB to come uh, in the fight, uh, within the fight of, against, against the uh, inflation. As for the domestic uh, assumptions, uh, one of them is uh, uh, one of the most important uh, uh, is uh, the uh, fiscal, fiscal side uh, assumptions. Uh, we can expect that this year the fiscal impulse will be slightly uh, restrictive uh, following the fact that the uh, uh, majority of the uh, previously approved uh, measures uh, to support the economy in the COVID and post-COVID uh, period will expire or will, will be terminated. And this is, uh, this is generating uh, kind of uh, restrictive uh, fiscal policy stance. But this uh, fiscal restriction is simultaneously uh, partly compensated by newly approved measures taken on both revenue and expenditure side of public budgets to uh, combat the negative effects of uh, energy, high energy prices on domestic households and enterprises. For the, uh, for the uh, next year, we can expect that uh, fiscal uh, impulse will be only slightly uh, positive as the uh, measures taken the energy crisis will uh, more or less uh, uh, counterbalance each other, as you can find in the summarizing uh, table. Uh, and in uh, 2024, uh, fiscal impulse will turn uh, slightly negative as the energy crisis supportive measures will, say, uh, will fade away and there will, there will be only gradual phasing of the drawdown of money from the EU funds uh, starting the, uh, after, after the new programming period uh, has started. Let me now turn your attention to the uh, outlook uh, for domestic variables as such. Uh, we can expect that uh, domestic uh, CPI inflation will accelerate further in the uh, fourth quarter of this year, uh, being on uh, quarterly average somewhat above uh, uh, 18%, and the actual monthly peak should be in uh, December with uh, CPI in year-on-year -year terms being s slightly above 19%. Uh, starting the, uh, since, the, since the beginning of next year, inflation should uh, decelerate quite sharply uh, and uh, get to uh, single-digit figures uh, around the mid of next year and continuing uh, to decline further and stabilize uh, close to our 2% target on the monetary policy horizon, which is, as I, as, uh, as I emphasized, the first half of uh, 2024. The stabilization of uh, inflation close to the 2% target at the monetary policy horizon is in the forecast supported by further increase of domestic nominal interest rates uh, in the end of this year. As you can see from the bottom chart, uh, the monetary policy inflation will be on the whole uh, forecast horizon somewhat below uh, the headline inflation and the deviation will temporarily increase uh, in uh, the fourth quarter of this year due to the last year a temporary, temporary waiver on VAT uh, relating to uh, energies, uh, uh, energies related to housing and, and the, the, um, the respective base effect will now cause this, this short-term uh, widening of this, of this uh, deviation. Uh, if we look closer into the structure of the expected uh, inflation profile, we can, we can see that uh, inflation will be still very, mu uh, very much uh, dominated by the 
core inflation segment, but also uh, further escalating growth in administered prices and food price, food price growth will be uh, also pushing inflation uh, upwards, whereas core inflation is currently peaking and we can expect the deceleration of uh, core inflation uh, contribution to the overall inflation following the uh, basically two things. Uh, uh, Non-tradable uh, segment within core inflation has already started to decelerate uh, in the previous months, uh, being supported uh, primarily by the decline of uh, until recently very high contribution of imputed rents. On the other hand, uh, tradable sec tradable inflation within uh, core inflation uh, is still uh, uh, quite quite high and even slightly accelerating, but. In, uh, in the coming months and quarters, uh, core inflation as a whole should come uh, quite uh, radically below, uh, downwards uh, and together with gradually evaporating uh, uh, price increases in uh, energy sector and in food price sector, we can expect uh, the decline in the overall inflation uh, profile. Growth of administered prices uh, will escalate uh, uh, till the end of this year, despite uh, measures taken um, by the Czech government to uh, cap uh, or to, other, to cap uh, uh, prices of natural gas and electricity. And the growth of administered prices will be very high also in the first half of uh, next year or maybe until the end of next year. And some stability, stabilization of the situation in this regard can be expected only as from the beginning of 2024. The uh, growth of nominal uh, uh, costs in the uh, consumer sector is, has just peaked and we can expect a gradual deceleration of that growth following especially the uh, evaporating pressures from the import side. Bo bo uh, especially uh, uh, energy component within import prices, but also uh, later on also uh, core Im input price, import prices will uh, decline their contributions, whereas the domestic uh, economy will generate relatively uh, steady uh, contributions to the overall uh, growth in uh, nominal uh, marginal costs within the consumer sector. If we look uh, more closely into the domestic price pressures, we can uh, see that uh, after some temporary uh, de decline in the, the dynamics, uh, they will be relatively stagnant over the whole forecast horizon, being driven by relatively uh, solid nominal wage growth in the business industries, which will be only partly compensated by uh, labor efficiency or by, by productivity, uh, productivity gains. Uh, following the expected um, uh, slowdown uh, of the domestic economic activity growth, we can expect kind of turnover on the domestic labor market. Uh, the employment growth will stop uh, in coming quarters and will be, uh, will be, and the employment will be flat uh, uh, onwards, uh, whereas the uh, unemployment rate, after being very low and declining for many, for many uh, quarters, will start to increase gradually uh, in the coming uh, quarters. Nominal wage growth in the business area will accelerate as uh, uh, employees will push to uh, their employers to compensate at least partly for the previous uh, price increases, but the space uh, to increase uh, nominal wages in the business sector is uh, definitely limited by the high, uh, by escalating input, input prices in the corporate, corporate sector. But uh, nominal wage growth at uh, the end of the day will be hovering somewhere uh, around 8% over the uh, almost whole forecast uh, horizon. Uh, Despite that uh, relatively strong nominal wage growth, uh, the, the uh, real purchasing power of domestic households will be negatively affected by the continuing high inflation, at least uh, in the first half of the, um, the forecast horizon. And you can see that the real, uh, in the real terms, the volume of wages and salaries will be uh, declining very strongly, despite this uh, quite, quite uh, lively and nominal, nominal, nominal dynamics. This, this uh, decline in uh, real uh, volume of uh, 
uh, wages and salaries will uh, curb uh, the, uh, the, domestic, uh, the, the household consumption uh, for uh, the rest of this year and uh, in 2023. Uh, GDP as a whole is also in the Czech Republic heading into a recession. Uh, the, in year-on-year -year terms, uh, the GDP dynamics uh, will turn negative uh, till the end of this year and will uh, stay there until the beginning of 2024. Uh, this will be driven by uh, the uh, uh, declining uh, uh, household consumption, uh, which is negatively influenced by the uh, high uh, inflation and uh, real disposal income uh, decline, together with uh, very worsened uh, sentiment among both uh, households and uh, enterprises. Uh, also, the uh, foreign uh, uh, demand and uh, world trade will, will uh, somewhat curb uh, domestic export and investment, uh, export performance and investment climate. Uh, as uh, in uh, annual terms uh, the, or whole year terms, the Czech economy will uh, grow uh, by approximately 2% uh, this year, whereas uh, in 2023 uh, the GDP will decline slightly and the GDP growth will renew in 2024, where, where the uh, increase will be approximately 2.5%. Uh, According to the uh, preliminary or flash GDP estimate published by the Czech Statistical Office uh, this week, uh, Czech economy uh, uh, grew by 1.6% uh, in the third quarter of this year uh, in year-on-year -year terms, uh, but decreased uh, by 0.4% uh, in quarter-on-quarter -quarter terms, which was fully in line with the expectations of our new forecast. Following that profile, the, that expected profile of uh, economic activity, we can expect that uh, domestic uh, uh, economy will be, uh, that the previous overheating of the domestic economy will, will uh, fade away and the Czech economy will be operating, uh, will be operating somewhat below its potential. Here you can see the uh, uh, plots of uh, individual demand side components. Uh, I have already described uh, the household consumption quite, uh, quite uh, precisely. If we look into the gross capital formation uh, profile, we can identify that uh, this will be dominating, dominated uh, by the continuing high uh, uh, contributions of uh, changes in inventories whereas uh, private investment will be relatively subdued, and the same is true for public investment in real terms, despite in nominal terms, public investment will grow quite, quite fast. Uh, following the expectations or the assumptions regarding foreign, foreign economies, uh, we can expect uh, a very subdued uh, uh, performance on both export and uh, import side of the uh, foreign trade. And uh, for the re and, and reacceleration re of the dynamics uh, can be expected only uh, in the second uh, half of forecast horizon, following the assumptions that the global value chains problems will fade away, will fade away uh, since the mid of next year, and the current <coughs> and the and the uh, let's say uh, world economy recession and uh, uh, subdued uh, uh, world trade will also uh, recover. Uh, in 2024. Uh, the new forecast uh, expects that in the near term, the Czech corona against the euro will be stable, relatively stable, uh, close to uh, current levels, which is uh, 24.6 coronas uh, per euro, and it will stay here uh, for uh, a few quarters. However, the exchange rate will start to depreciate slightly uh, after that, uh, uh, following the narrowing interest rate uh, differential with uh, the euro area. After the negative uh, impacts of disrupted uh, global value chains and uh, the direct uh, effects of the war in Ukraine will fade away uh, and the balance of uh, trade of the Czech economy will turn positive again, uh, the uh, uh, appreciation trend of the Czech corona will renew and uh, appreciation could be then expected uh, in 2024, uh, together with uh, uh, improved uh, global uh, financial, global sentiment on financial markets. 
Uh, consistent with the new forecast is a rise in market interest rates initially, followed by the gradual decline in the course of uh, next year. Uh, I would like to uh, stress once again that this uh, uh, interest rate trajectory is consistent with the assumption of the baseline scenario in which the central bank sets uh, its um, monetary uh, policy interest rates uh, in order to achieve 2% target at the monetary policy horizon, which is situated uh, 15 to uh, 21, first, uh, 20, 21 months ahead, which is the uh, first half of uh, 2024. After the uh, uh, inflation pressures gradually decline in the uh, next uh, quarters, following the previous tightening of monetary conditions and following the, as the assumptions of uh, uh, already escalated uh, foreign price pressures. The monetary policy can start easing uh, uh, its, monet uh, its interest rates in a forward-looking manner with the view of stabilizing uh, uh, inflation close to 2% inflation target uh, since uh, or, or from the sec uh, first half of 2024 onwards. Let me now provide you with a brief comparison of the new forecast uh, with the previous one. Uh, the CPI uh, um, forecast has been uh, revised downwards uh, following the downward um, revision of all components. Uh, economic growth will be uh, considerable, considerably lower uh, in the next two years uh, following the assumption or the, the forecasted uh, uh, less positive developments in both domestic and foreign demand side. The, the higher wage growth in the new forecast is a response to the uh, better than uh, the expected uh, observed data for the second and partly for the third quarter of this year, uh, whereas in the ho longer horizon, the uh, worse than, ex than previously expected uh, situation in the uh, Czech economic activity and in the Czech labor market is, is causing the downward revision uh, of the nominal wage growth in business sector with uh, the previous forecast. The trajectory of uh, the nominal, inter nominal exchange rate uh, of the corona against the euro has been shifted uh, to a, uh, stronger levels uh, on the whole uh, forecast horizon in the new forecast, uh, which is uh, taking into account the uh, somewhat stronger um, uh, initial uh, condition uh, when it comes to the exchange rate and simultaneously the assumption of a limited path through of the rapidly rising interest rates abroad to, co to the corona's uh, exchange rate via the interest rate differential in the coming quarters, which is uh, preventing uh, the corona exchange rate from, from uh, depreciating this, this expert, expert judgment. Here you can see the um, decomposition of the interest rate uh, uh, forecast change uh, with, uh, with the previous uh, forecast. Uh, you can uh, easily see that the uh, interest rate path has, mm, has been uh, revised upwards. Uh, the foreign outlook uh, fosters uh, this uh, upward revision of the interest rate outlook for over the uh, entire forecast horizon, uh, being driven uh, especially by uh, higher than previously expected uh, nominal interest rates in the euro area, together with the weaker outlook uh, of, for the euro dollar uh, exchange rate. In the same uh, direction, the, uh, sh uh, the, the uh, movement of the domestic monetary policy, monetary policy horizon by one quarter closer to the point of the decision is, is uh, uh, generating uh, this, this uh, pressure on, on uh, uh, nominal, dom domestic nominal interest rates uh, uh, in the uh, uh, upwards. And uh, finally, uh, we have uh, incorporated uh, uh, battery of expert judgments into the new forecast. The first group relates to the exchange rate. Uh, we have put an uh, expert judgment uh, curbing the effect of uh, narrowing interest rate uh, uh, differential on domestic exchange rate uh, 
uh, which is uh, playing a role, especially in the, in the near term horizon. Uh, this is supported by uh, expertly reduced domestic economic activity. In the longer term horizon, the expert judgments are uh, uh, working in the opposite way, which is represented by downward expert adjustment of uh, labor productivity growth together with uh, continued uh, uh, brisk wage growth. Let me now uh, dedicate the final part of my presentation to other monetary policy simulations we have uh, prepared. Uh, here you can see uh, uh, how the uh, endogenous variables look like uh, when assuming a different uh, um, location of the monetary policy horizon in the uh, interest rate. Um, a reaction function, interest rate rule, <clears throat> the baseline scenario, as I already mentioned uh, several times, uh, assumes the monetary policy horizon uh, 15 uh, to 21 months ahead, whereas the uh, red line is uh, representing uh, the, the uh, monetary policy horizon uh, being uh, 18 to 24 months ahead, which is uh, which was the case, uh, uh, which was the, the, the specification of the monetary policy reaction function in our uh, summer forecast. In this scenario, uh, the longer, uh, longer monet or more distant monetary policy horizon enables uh, uh, the central bank to keep interest rates uh, relatively stable at the, at, the, at the beginning of the forecast horizon and only and after this stability, there is a uh, declining trend in nominal, uh, domestic nominal interest rates. Whereas when uh, we move uh, to the setup of this uh, monetary policy uh, rule, uh, as assuming uh, uh, monetary policy horizon to be situated uh, 12 to 18 months ahead, uh, the need to combat uh, inflation pressures, which are quite uh, significant already, or which are quite significant in the second half of next year, there is a, a significant uh, increase in the dom domestic uh, nominal uh, interest rates in this, in this scenario. Uh, we also, um, <coughs> uh, let's say, repeated a scenario with unanchored inflation expectations. Uh, when uh, constructing this scenario, we uh, used the data from uh, financial markets uh, uh, inflation expectations, which is the local version of uh, survey of professional forecasters. And we uh, were inspired by uh, the expectations of analysts. Uh, uh, some of them are here among you, uh, expecting uh, uh, inflation in one year and three, three year horizon. So we inspired by, by this, uh, this outlook and we increased in the simulation the endogenously uh, consistent uh, or model consistent uh, inflation expectations by 0.4 percentage point at the one year horizon and by 0.8 percentage point at the three year horizon compared to uh, endogenous uh, or model consistent uh, 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 inflation expectations in the baseline scenario. Uh, when facing such an increased uh, um, um, headwind uh, from, from inflation expectations, the central bank must uh, deliver a much bolder uh, interest rate reaction to bring inflation successfully back to 2% uh, inflation target at the standard uh, monetary policy horizon or at the monetary policy horizon, which is the same as in the baseline scenario. So you can see that the deviation of inflation uh, from the baseline is relatively uh, minor, whereas the uh, deviation of the interest rates and the exchange rate uh, is uh, quite significant, saying that under such uh, circumstances, the tightening of domestic uh, monetary conditions as a whole uh, would, be, uh, would be much, much uh, uh, stronger. And this slide is uh, just a, a table summarizing the uh, most important elements or, or moments of uh, all the th scenarios uh, we've prepared to facilitate the monetary policy decision-making process of the um, Czech National Bank's board. Having said that, I would like to thank you for your attention by now, and I am passing the floor back to our spokesperson, Petra Vostočilová. 
Mr. Graf, thank you for your fresh numbers and uh, consequences from the new outlook. And now I'd, I would like to open the discussion. First of all, I would like to ask you, before you ask a question, please introduce yourself and your company. It's just for record. Thank you. And now it's time for, you, for the first question. So, good morning. Uh, uh, I'm Radomir Jaj from Generali Investment CEE. I have uh, two questions related to wage developments, which is being often mentioned as, let me say, potential risk uh, to the forecast. Uh, we see the new forecast you have uh, with growth at 7.7 .7 for next year. So my question, possibly for Mr. Kral, is whether the risk of this forecast are seen as balanced or whether risk in any direction are prevailing. And the second part of my question, possibly targeted also for uh, Deputy Governor Zamrazilova, is uh, whether when you are debating the wage developments and the potential uncertainties, whether you came to some more specific level of stronger wage growth, which would be seen already as a signal that the labor market is overheating and you have to respond. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, from our uh, point of view, which was um, by the, uh, the end of the day also uh, taken uh, uh, on board by the board members, is that uh, there is a, still a risk of uh, potentially de anchoring of inflation expectations, which would or could materialize by a kind of wage price pile. Uh, and this, this uh, risk, or if materializing, it could be uh, uh, relatively, relatively um, um, significant, uh, significant uh, message for the central bank. But from technical point of view, we have incorporated uh, all possible or, or, or available information into the new forecast. And the baseline scenario, as such, does not uh, assume inflation expectations being de anchored. Uh, uh, so I may add some uh, some comments. Uh, well, of course, the risk of wage price spiral um, uh, belong to our night nightmares during during summer, but but uh, now we we feel that the labour market uh, starts uh, to be less overheated than before. Uh, if you if you will uh, look into the into the whole forecast, uh, the unemployment rate is expected to increase to more than to almost four percent measured by Czech Statistical Office and to more than five percent measured by uh, Ministry of uh, Social Affairs. The difference is uh, quite quite normal when the unemployment rates go up. So uh, this is the first point to make uh, us more calm. And the second point is that um, even though, of course, the trade unions are asking for higher wages, and we all know that, uh, very often uh, their demands were not met by the employers. And uh, the uh, third point is that uh, most probably as uh, we look into the data, the space for the, the entrepreneurs and the employers uh, to, um, to, to deliver higher wages to their employees, uh, the space is rather limited. So, of course, there is the risk of uh, higher wage growth. Uh, but I don't, uh, for the time being, we don't, as a majority of the bank board, we don't consider this uh, to materialize. And uh, uh, the, in our uh, majority opinion, the risk of uh, the wage spiral has been, uh, now is lower than uh, in the previous forecast. Is, is it okay? Thank you. Thank you. Next question, Mr. Sobíšek. Good morning, Pavel Sobíšek from Unicredit. Uh, I have a question primarily to Petr Král, and it relates to uh, FX assumptions. I would like to know uh, what assumption there is about uh, 
interest rate, uh, about, about uh, the central bank's interventions uh, for uh, the FX. Uh, I understand that um, you cannot disclose uh, real intentions of, um, of the uh, central bank's board about this, but uh, for us as analysts, uh, it is useful to have a complete picture. And um, obviously we can see from, from the paper uh, how much um, uh, the FX assumption is influenced by interest trend differential, but we are missing an information about um, FX interventions. Thank you. Uh, I cannot say anything more than uh, I described during my presentation. There is an expert judgment in the UIP uh, equation in the model, which is uh, kind of dampening the effect of the interest rate differential, which is going to narrow over the forecast horizon, and it has some effect on the exchange rate uh, path in the coming uh, few quarters. Thank you. Next question. I'm uh, sorry. If I might add, um, uh, in our opinion, the, the um, risk of, uh, of the impact of, uh, of uh, UIP uh, to, to the exchange rate uh, is not very high. Uh, for the, the first reason is that this, this theoretical issue doesn't work perfectly in practice. And the second point is that we consider the, uh, the, uh, the interest rate differential as substantial and quite high to keep uh, Czech currency at uh, stable levels, even though the ECB would uh, increase the rates to three or above three percent. The next question from Mr. Dufek. Peter Dufek, Caritas Bank. I have a question for Mr. Kral. I usually admire the simulations of the Czech National Bank, and just now when I look at your present simulations, I see nearly the same result for the inflation. In spite of the rate hike or possible rate hike to 10%, the inflation within the monetary policy horizon is nearly the same as in the case of no hikes. So the impact of the interest rates on the inflation is just now such a low? That's my question, thank you. Uh, you are referring to uh, the comparison of the individual uh, scenarios with different monetary policy horizons? Yes, that's it. Because when you look at the yeah. inflation, it's uh, nearly the same GDP as yeah. well. There is only small, small differentiation in between the exchange rate, and that's all. Uh, the scale on the uh, uh, vertical axis is not uh, very much uh, in favor of the comparison because of the high levels of uh, inflation in current uh, current uh, year. Uh, there is deviation of the target uh, uh, of the inflation on the monetary policy horizon uh, uh, when comparing the individual uh, these, these individual scenarios. Uh, uh, Monetary policy really uh, uh, works. Uh, the, the situation of the monetary policy horizon plays a role, and uh, the uh, deviations of, uh, of interest rates path and the exchange rate trajectory when comparing uh, these three scenarios is saying uh, relatively a lot about the pressures that uh, the central bank uh, is facing when moving uh, the monetary policy horizon uh, back and forward and the deviation on the on the uh, longer term uh, longer term horizon is um, not negligible but still at the end of the day the central bank in all the three scenarios is inflation targeting central bank bringing inflation back to 2% inflation target that's why at the end of the forecast horizon uh, inflation must be close to 2% in all the three scenarios. Mrs. Avrasova, I would like also to comment this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for this question because this was, this was one of the reasons why majority of the bank board has decided to uh, leave the interest rates unchanged. Because uh, 
on the one side you have a very, very uh, small positive impact to inflation. On the other one, you have the negative impact uh, to, to the whole economy, which is going into recession. The next question, please. Jeremy Hindra, Citibank. I would like to follow up uh, to this question. I would like to ask uh, whether these alternative scenarios are also fully fledged as a baseline scenario. So whether, it whether this alternative scenario includes also the expert judgment as the baseline scenario. So we, whether this is really comparable or not. And the second question would be for the Vice Governor Sam Brazilova. It is about uh, we have seen in August uh, forecast envisaged a hike in the policy rate. In November, the forecast also called for a quite bold increase in the policy rate. Aren't we afraid simply that we will fail to deliver inflation to the target? In particular, if I look at your baseline scenario, I see the core CPI in 2024 to be still above the target. Yes, so delivering the inflation back to the target in your baseline scenario is just based on the regulated prices, food prices, but not on the core CPI. So this would make me a little bit nervous about policy outcome. Thank you. As for your first question, uh, these uh, simulations are full-fledged uh, scenarios. Uh, they are uh, generated uh, using the same battery of expert judgments uh, as it was in the baseline scenario. Yes. Uh, yes, of course, the question uh, on the decision of the bank board. It was, yeah, I understood well. Uh, uh, well, uh, we, we have uh, uh, very carefully, carefully uh, righted all the risks and the balance of the risks and uh, uh, we see we see three points of uh, or two points of risk uh, diminishing the inf uh, the, inf the the anchoring of the inflation uh, due to wage growth uh, spiral uh, yeah it i was very much afraid in uh, um, in in this point in uh, august but now i think it ha it seems that really this risk is uh, diminishing uh, the same is uh, about the risk stemming from abroad uh, the risk stemming from abroad in this forecast is just perceived as uh, as uh, due to as due to uh, UIP, as we have uh, as I have already mentioned, but there is uh, no discussion about the longer part of the interest rates curve. You see that the ECB that uh, during our last uh, monetary policy meeting, the EC the actions of ECB and uh, and other big central banks, uh, which pushed interest rates up, and the impact on the long-term interest rates in the Czech Republic was quite significant. It was, uh, it was some, I think, from four point something to five point something. And uh, the monetary policy transmission mechanism is very much uh, interested in delivering, in delivering the, the, the transmission of the interest rates through the whole uh, um, curve. Uh, and uh, third, uh, at present uh, discussions, for instance, at IMF levels, where our representatives has, have uh, have been part uh, of the negotiations, there appears um, uh, a story uh, that um, there may be some concerted uh, synergic effect of the hikes of uh, most and biggest central banks in, uh, um, in uh, cooling the global inflation 
global inflation pressures. I think that uh, we have to, uh, to look at this idea more carefully and perhaps take it into account in our next meetings. And, you know, sometimes it needs more courage to do nothing than to act uh, following, <laughs> following the general meaning or, or um, the pressures stemming from the markets, etc. And I'm, I'm really, um, I'm really um, quite sure that uh, another hikes would not be helpful to, to get the inflation to the target if there are some other, other um, factors coming from abroad, like we have seen the COVID period, the Ukraine war, and um, on the other hand, I'm strongly convinced that the 7% seven, seven repo rate is really strict enough to, to get the inflation to the target in the horizon of, uh, uh, let's say, um, 18 months or 24 months, because uh, still, if there are some some expectations, two point something, it is still in the tolerance range, and the the inflation the inflation has been out of the tolerance band during COVID period and during most of the period in 2017, uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, etc. And uh, no, one, no one asked for stricter monetary policy in those days. The interest rates were at zero level and under the story of uh, having um, enough space uh, against the deflationary pressures, uh, the, uh, the inflation soil has been going richer and richer, and now we feel that. So I don't want to do the same mistake and overkill. Thank you. Next, next, next question, Mr. Shin. Uh, Jakub Seidler, Czech Banking Association. Uh, I think the market a little bit understand that the uh, current majority of the board uh, prefers higher rates for longer than to go aggressively higher. Uh, but still, can we imagine uh, the cuts uh, if basically economic trajectory goes as in the baseline? And can we imagine then cuts at the end of next year as the current uh, basically trajectory of the rate is suggesting? Thank you. Yeah, that's the part of the story. Rather than than make um, uh, than make some one or two hikes, and then believe that we can go down in a foreseeable future, I think may be naive. Instead of that, I think that uh, due to the re really rich inflation soil in the Czech Republic, stemming from too long to lose monetary policy in the past, I'm afraid that we will have to keep the interest rates at uh, high levels for a longer period of time that the markets and, and uh, the general public uh, was used to in the past decade. Next question. Mr. Mincic. Thank you so much, uh, Mincic, the Czech Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I would like to share rather a few remarks uh, than to ask questions. So, the first one. Uh, temporary, the temporary crisis framework uh, is prolonged. It implies more intensive, substantially more intensive subsidies in uh, 2023. The second remark, predicted uh, change in inventories seems to be very, very disputable. The third one, the EU regulation will affect, affect uh, uh, windfall tax and direct levy imposed on receipts of electricity producers as well. And the last one, with respect to the exchange rate, 
the shift to stronger levels is not desired uh, from the point of view of Czech industry and exporters as minimum. Thank you so much. I think I would make a comment. I completely agree that that uh, the that the sector of the entrepreneurs um, uh, is uh, very important, and and that's also what we what we understand. So that we we declare that we are ready to prevent any strong fluctuations of the currency, because from my first mandate, I do remember very well that, that this was very. It was a very subtle, subtle point for the entrepreneurs uh, who didn't like, in fact, the uh, ups and downs. Mr. Shingle. Uh, I would like to ask uh, about the impact on the interest rate differential on the euro check. Uh, what is the, what's your explanation that it doesn't work as usually? Yeah, why the higher Fed policy rate, ECB policy rate, uh, keep the euro check unchanged? Yeah. Thank you. So, what's your explanation? Yeah, uh, I suppose uh, you were not presented at the seminar here in the Czech National Bank uh, prepared uh, meeting with Mr. with Professor Mandel and uh, I listened it. Yeah, I was there. He was there. So, um, I, I yeah, I. I do very much trust my colleague, Mr. Kral, but still I, still I feel that uh, the arguments of Professor Mandel, that uh, the risk, uh, that the risk aversion and risk premium, may may um, sometimes uh, act stronger than one or fifty percent hike. For me, this is a strong argument because I think that uh, that the uh, that the developments of the currencies in the region are not driven by the fundamentals; they are driven by the by the whole by the whole picture and the risk aversion to the whole region. And we we are very happy to have FX reserves enough to do something with that. Uh, and uh, look, for instance, uh, for monetary policy in Hungary. Any, any interest rate differential will not help them. Yes, please. Uh, Martina Inčko, MND. I have just one quick question on the unanchored inflation expectation scenario, because I think that uh, the... Um, the corona appreciation seems a bit too strong for me in that particular scenario. Now it's like 50 hellers, which is quite a lot. Uh, that's, the, that's one thing. It's also in line with what um, Mrs. Amrazila was just saying about the, the interest rate differential. And uh, secondly, uh, we expect there that the unanchored uh, inflation expectations happen only in the Czech Republic. Is that, is that the case? Because if they also happened in the Eurozone, most probably this scenario wouldn't have worked right in, in this manner. So two questions, on, two questions on this alternative scenario. Thank you. Uh, the uh, trajectory of the exchange rate is endogenous in this uh, scenario, uh, following the uh, very uh, much widened interest rate differential from the, on the Czech uh, side, following the fact that the CNB or the central bank in this scenario is aware of the of the risk materializing and is reacting preemptively to that, uh, widening the uh, interest rate differential quite quite significantly. And you are right; this scenario is uh, just a uh, speci uh, uh, just a uh, specific check case uh, scenario without taking into account possible uh, uh, possibly a similar situation in the euro area. But the inflation rate has been uh, quite different from euro area average in the Czech Republic for many quarters. Well, maybe one comment to the scenario with the anchored uh, inflation expectations. Uh, we have to take into account that this is really um, 
uh, that uh, this is really a little bit artificial scenario because if you look at the figures, uh, it's based, or you, you may have a look at this when you have the whole report, um, the, uh, the, uh, the scenario uh, has the first assumption that the inflation in three years horizon will be up to 2.8%, which is 0.8% uh, below uh, be, uh, above the target. But at the same time, uh, the, uh, the, the experts who uh, made those IOFT survey and uh, the average is 2.8 in three years horizon, but this is consistent with 1.2% GDP growth in 2023. So we don't, I, I don't like mixing apples with pears because you cannot at the same time expect inflation to be at uh, 2.8 and at the same time expect GDP to be minus 0.7% in 2023. This is something, well, this is very interesting scenario and maybe some warning signals, of course there are, but still I think that um, this is artificial and inconsistent because you cannot mix the two stories together. Either you have Either you have recession and then you have lower inflation, or you don't have recession and then you may have higher inflation. So please just, I would be quite interested to, to have sometimes, next time, some more feedback about that because that's, uh, that's something that I'm thinking very intensively about. Mr. Vajmělek. Jan Vejměli, Komerční banka. Uh, good morning to, uh, to everybody. I have uh, two questions. The first one for, for Mr. Kral on a short-term inflation uh, outlook. Let's say by the end of the, 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 this year. Uh, could you give us more details? Uh, how do you implement it, the government measures uh, uh, fighting with the energy crisis? And the second one is for, for uh, Eva Zamrazilova. Um, the, uh, the yesterday's uh, board decision was uh, quite clear, not in line with the base scenario. Uh, several um, simulations were presented, uh, which uh, scenario is, uh, let's say, the uh, best for, uh, for you. The, the, the scenario with the, with the uh, monetary policy horizon uh, 18 to 24 months, or do you have any other scenario? Thank you. As for the uh, government measures against the uh, high uh, energy prices, I can uh, provide you with a relatively uh, detailed comments. Uh, as for the caps for electricity and uh, natural gas, those are assumed in the forecast to be uh, valid as from the January uh, this year and will be influencing the uh, prices direct direct will be directly influences the prices of the individual comp uh, of the individual representatives within the consumer basket and uh, pressures uh, prices of both natural gas and uh, electricity uh, will converge to those caps as for the uh, remission of the uh, of the fee on renewable energy sources, uh, this is not uh, um, captured as a price adjusting measure. This is just a, a fiscal transfer compensating uh, households for uh, higher uh, outlays and. As for the uh, as for the uh, uh, as for the uh, uh, savings tariff, uh, this the, sorry, I, I just made a mistake. The 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 uh, remission of the fee on renewable uh, uh, energy sources is uh, uh, captured as a regulate price measure, not as a change in indirect taxation. And the uh, savings tariff is a 
uh, is captured as a fiscal uh, measure on the uh, expenditure side, not directly influencing the prices of individual components, individual representatives in the consumer basket. Yeah, uh, let me add to, the, to this point that uh, we were discussing all these issues with, uh, or, or the, the experts have been trying to discuss this with Czech Statistical Office. I think I, I'm very, uh, um, I'm very um, uneasy or, or um, I feel uncertainty about the technical, technical transmission of new, of new tariffs and new contracts, etc., into the real prices, into the real CPI. Because, for instance, it was a surprise, a downside surprise in July or June, July, and, and uh, upside, uh, upside surprise in August. So, so this is my big uncertainty. What, what, may, what may come from the statistical office? Yeah, so this is, uh, I, I think that our experts are doing their best in this, in this uh, area, but it's, I, I feel a big uncertainty here, but it is stemming from technical, technical uh, issues in, in the office. Statistical. Well, and as for your question with uh, the scenarios, well, I'm quite happy with the with the baseline scenario. I don't, don't have problem in the majority of the bank board. The question is uh, uh, is valuation the risks valuation of uh, of the individual uh, pro-inflationary or anti-inflationary factors. We just uh, believe that the, uh, that the pro-inflationary factors are not that strong. That's all. So, does they have some more question? If you want to ask some question, is there any other? Mrs. May? Hi, it's my Dwan from Bank of America. Thank you very much for your presentation today. Um, I would like to ask um, a bit of technical, but also for the board, about the way we read the forecast right now. You have a lot higher uh, interest rates and stronger um, Czech Corona. Uh, and the board's view is that they do not want to, the, the risk assessment is that they do, do not want to raise interest rates at this point in time. Does it mean that the, the central bank as a whole is more sensitive to the exchange rates um, in, in this uh, setup? And um, a bit more of a guidance, if you could, um, Mr. Mazilva, about the future, because you say that the risk of high inflation is, is lower now. Um, so what is the macro variables or risk that you would look at to gauge for the, the uh, rate cut in the future, uh, if we can ask for some guidance on that? Thank you. Well, we are quite happy with the level of the exchange rate right now. I think that uh, this is uh, no, this is okay. We are okay with that, but still, of course, the the development of the crown is uh, is um, was somehow somehow um, still still there is some heritage of the FX floor. From the from the from the past, and now there is the there is the risk uh, coming from from geopolitical geopolitical issues, and uh, then then is uh, another another point that um, of course the current account doesn't look uh, uh, so good as before because we, we uh, there are high prices of. Uh, oil, energy, gas, etc., and moreover, there was higher volume uh, of imports because of pre preparing for for winter. So I think that um, otherwise uh, the trade balance book would uh, will look better when when all the problems with with the chains. Uh, will be solved because our our uh, machinery export and um, uh, other parts of export are, are doing well. So, I think this will uh, be fundamental supporters for the exchange rates in the future. Um, and for the for the second question, 
it was some for a bit guidance for uh, which macroeconomic uh, factors we will we will uh, we will um, observe. So first, labor market. Labor market. Uh, now there is a big uncertainty. Uh, you know, the labor market was very tight since uh, since 2016-17. Um, tightening of the labor market has been gradually going up. Now we, well, it's not uh, a good uh, good um, good message for for people, but for the macroeconomic balance, uh, it is it is a good uh, some good sign that. Probably some um, the the ratio or the in the service the number of the companies that are planning to hire out people is the highest in in a couple of years I'm afraid so that um, the pressure stemming from labor market with the employees being in, in comparative advantage again against the, the employers that will probably have a, uh, fade out. So this will be my, my, my uh, or our uh, first, uh, first uh, area. Of course, uh, public finance. Risks stemming from for inflation from public finance mm, cannot be ignored, and uh, of course the whole macroeconomic activity and the banking sector, monetary aggregates, uh, mm, credits, mortgages, all these all these kinds of information. It's very important. All these inform pieces of information are very important, and we have somehow to we have somehow to put them together to make some consistent picture. For now, we see that the credit market is almost dead. The mortgages falling down by 80 percent, seven billion crowns in in uh, September fall of. Um, the credits for the companies falling by almost 40 percent, so it all makes some combinations which we have to put together. It's a puzzle. I see Mr. Solvishek one more question, has one more question. Uh, I have one technical question to uh, fiscal policy assumptions uh, for 2023. On the uh, revenue side, you are separating two items, windfall tax, 78 billion crowns, and so-called levy on excess profits, 15 billion crowns. So my, my question is, what is what? Thank you. Uh, I mean, uh, what, what is the separation, whether, for instance, uh, levy means profits from the banking sector and uh, windfall tax uh, from the other sectors, or why this separation? Windfall tax is uh, for our uh, banking sector, refineries and uh, energy sector, whereas the levy is uh, following the EU regulation concerning all the energy providers uh, having some extra uh, extra uh, revenues and extra extra uh, profits. This is fully in line with the proposals made from our uh, colleagues from Ministry of Finance. We have nothing better. Can I ask you, have you somebody from you some more questions? Yes, uh, it was the Eurasia GDP growth was published and it was better than was expected. So what is the message for you? Because message for me is that maybe the foreign demand will actually be a little bit stronger, more resilient because of the fiscal support from the Eurozone. So what is your take from this better than expected Euro -RI GDP growth for your forecast and policy? Thank you. Um, most probably if, if we compare. So, so, the, uh, so the figures were better than expectations? Germany. Germany. Well, I think that Germany has some fiscal stimulus, and uh, and uh, of course, uh, 
the tightening of monetary policy has started uh, just um, before very short time, so it cannot be cannot be um, perceived in the real figures. Instead of um, which is a difference uh, against Czech Republic, um, where we have some more than one year tight monetary policy. Yeah, but I think that Germany has some reserves, and we are quite happy about that because Germany is our it's our key for growth. I would like to thank Mrs. Zamazlova for the last comment, and I would like to end this session and uh, repeat and remind you that the monetary policy report will be as a document published next Friday. Goodbye.